Good evening, film fans. It's Danny from We Talk Film here to give you my review of Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Now, I tell you, after five months of no cinema, stepping back in there today was a magical moment. As those first trailers started playing, I'll fully admit there may have been a single tear at finally being back there and seeing everything in the flesh with the right atmosphere. Tenet is a mishmash of espionage thriller and deep time travel sci-fi. John David Washington and Robert Pattinson star as spies on an epic mission crossing continents and time to hunt down a future technology capable of destroying the world. Kenneth Branagh's dastardly arms dealer Sator seeks to thwart them, whilst his wife, the tortured cat played by Elizabeth Debicki, is a way in for our protagonist. Now, the cast and filmmakers have spoken at length about how there are very few visual effects in this film, and that's something definitely to bear in mind when watching it, because it makes it so incredibly impressive. It has absolutely insane action set pieces. The standouts for me being an insane bungee jump between buildings and a fast-paced car chase down the highways of Tallinn, Estonia, when you think about the fact that these things have actually been done practically in camera by stuntmen and women, it's insane to behold. Chris Nolan has said there are no green screens used in this film whatsoever. So every bullet, every explosion, every leap, every fall was truly performed. It's a spectacle in filmmaking that deserves to be seen on a big screen. The film also features an insane time travel effect where characters are able to move backwards through scenes. And when you consider the fact that, again, this was done practically, all of the actors would learn their scene, do it forwards, stop, and then do it backwards, including learning all of their dialogue backwards. It's really something special that's been achieved here. No shortcuts were taken whatsoever. Tenet is an out-and-out thriller that moves at a relentless pace. From the opening scene, which features a terrorist attack on an opera house, through to the final set piece, which is a massive army assault on an old town, it never stops for a second. There is no breathing room whatsoever, and it will wear you out. Now, the relentless action-driven pace of this film means it's not really a character piece, or at least it doesn't have time to be. The audience gets no backstory for our mysterious heroes, and most characters you see on screen get no time to grow or develop as people. Nevertheless, uh, Washington brings an impressive sincerity and physicality to his protagonist, and Pattinson's really good fun as the understated but sardonic fixer. Michael Caine is back for another Christopher Nolan cameo, and this one's particularly fun. Um, he has a excellent, not-so-subtle reference to the Kingsman films, which put a huge smile on my face. I won't spoil it, but if you spot it, do let us know in the comments. And it wouldn't be a Christopher Nolan film if it wasn't cerebral, non-linear, and hella complicated. You will be very confused for the first half of the film, but stick with it, trust in Nolan, it all comes together in a beautiful tapestry of storytelling. I will say that I don't think it's as elegant as, say, Inception, and it doesn't have the emotional punch of Interstellar. The exposition scenes of the characters trying to explain the physics of how it all works are honestly quite clunky, and I think it works best if you just accept it, move on, and don't think too hard about it. But this film will definitely bear re-watching. Um, we're seeing multiple scenes, multiple times from different perspectives. And I'm very curious to watch it again now, knowing what we know at the end. Now, this film was not scored by frequent collaborator Hans Zimmer. It was taken over this time by Ludwig Göransson, who recently scored Black Panther. Um, it is, once again, having that relentless, grinding, oppressive, atonal sound that has become typical for Christopher Nolan films. Um, I do think it gets a little out of hand in this film. Whilst it worked really well in Dunkirk for building a level of tension and chaos on the beach, it's so overbearing in this story that at times it was a little bit hard to understand the dialogue. And it felt a bit like uh, trying to watch TV in your house while someone's having a rave next door. <laughs> it's definitely a cinema experience though. Now, I'm not going to rank Tenet in the list of Christopher Nolan films, 
it would be too complicated to try and figure out anyway. I'm not going to give it a score out of 10 or a rating. I will tell you that in my review, Tenet is just incredible entertainment. Two and a half hours of non-stop tension, great performances, incredible action set pieces, and in a time where we are inundated with sequels and remakes, we really need to celebrate audacious, ambitious, original ideas. This is filmmaking at its very best. If it's safe to do so, get out there and be wowed. I can't wait for more big releases to start filtering back through to the open market. Please stay subscribed to We Talk Film and we'll bring you more reviews as soon as they come.